It's Bourbonite. Hello! Sarah, you're feeling better, right? I am now feeling better, you yes. You have your taste and your smell back. Mm -hmm. Well, about three weeks ago. It's been a few weeks. Yeah, you weren't, and uh, you had lost your, your taste and smell, and it coincided with a trip uh, with me going up to uh, Columbus, Ohio. Mm -hmm. While up there, I met up with Jason from the Mash and Drum. We had some drinks, had some discussions, and I thought it would be good to include you in. Oh, well, how thoughtful of you, Chad. On In this video. Broke it up into topics, gonna have you watching one of the videos and then get your take on the topic. All right, sounds How's like a good sound? time. All right, let's Can't wait to it. judge y'all. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. Trading barrel picks. Yeah. Yeah, so this bottle summer we jam. did for our Summer Jam event at Sagamore, nice. and they allowed us to pick a, uh, at the time when we picked it, they had never released a Vino de Narancha finish on their rye yet, so we got the first one. So orange liqueur, it was easily the best um, uh, sample we had out of the three. I think it's Naraha. Na Naran, Naranja. Naraha. Vino de Naraha. Chad, leave him alone. <laughs> Ooh, that's a spicy meatball. <laughs> this is savory. Yeah, I'm actually excited for you to like the mouthfeel on it. I think it's very velvety. Oh, it is velvety. <laughs> Speaking of mouthfeel, what are some of when you zoom out the more ridiculous things that whiskey drinkers do? <laughs> A little self reflection time for us both. I'll join you with it. I feel like saying mouthfeel, like in the <laughs> in the early parts of our channel, I wouldn't say mouthfeel because it just sort of had these snooty connotations around it. I finally started saying it because there was no, there wasn't a better word, but when I would say it, I would go mouthfeel like that, but no, that just I to remember, yeah. try to cover yeah. up the uh, potential snootiness of it. Now I just say it, I'm all in, I'm drinking the tea. <laughs> but I think for some outside people or people just getting into bourbon or whiskey, might be like, what's this mouth feel? Yeah, what is this like, mouth feel? What yeah. is he talking about? Uh -huh. Yeah, I I see that one. I definitely try to like temper what language I use when I'm talking to newer whiskey drinkers because I think mouthfeel does come off as kind of like a ridiculous thing to say. So I'll just use texture instead and that tends to go over better. I mean, and it's the same thing anyways, right? What, yeah. what, what else do you think that we do? I don't know, I used to, you know, swirl the glass all the time. I'm not really sure what that does. The old Opens swirl job. Up. Do like job. the old swirl job. You do, do a good swirl job. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of them. Swirl job, Jesus. <laughs> that doesn't really bother me, the swirling. I mean, I know it bothers a lot of people, like the aeration. I mean, I think when you make a big show of it, you know, I don't really get that. But yeah, like occasionally if I want to aerate something, yeah, I'll swirl it a little bit. I don't see the problem with that, guys. Let's not judge too harshly. One thing that I used to do uh, all the time was, um, I don't know why, but I, I <laughs> Every time I'd like take a bottle out, I would always, I was like turn it upside down first. Oh, that's cork maintenance, right? I know, but is that a, is that a thing? And not if you're getting into it all the time. Like if yeah. it's been a year or more. Uh, because I'd always get like, why do you, why do you, uh, why do you tip your bottles all the time? Like yeah. I always get that question. Maybe you saw a bartender do it. I'm sure. Yeah, maybe. I've, I've seen bartenders maybe. do it. Like if it's a really tight seal and you haven't been in it in a couple of years, like that cork might be brittle. If you're moistening the cork, uh, yeah. there's a better chance that it won't break off. It'll be less brittle. But also, cork can have cork rot, and then you're just putting your bourbon right over that cork. So it's a whole thing. I don't know. Screw tops are the best. We just don't like them because it's not fancy and there's no pop. Yeah, it's sound. not fancy enough. <laughs> yeah, I like that. We definitely like the pop. Yeah, for sure. What about? Uh, are you a believer in the neck pour? versus, you know, because it's always, it's been like a hot topic. Neck I've, pour. I've asked master distillers <laughs> this. I think I asked Danny Kahn yeah. um, a couple years ago on a pick, and he said, "There's, there's been so much time that this bourbon has been sitting in an open fat, and then it's been, you know, in another thing, and then it goes to, and then you're talking about a difference of here to here when it's had all this other time for it to change. He he said that he didn't buy into it at all. I have, for all I can tell, noticed differences. Yes. Between when it's here and when it's down here, or when it's sat, I don't know, can you see that? <laughs> when it's sat down here for a while too. I mean, I don't know what else to chalk it up to. So I guess I do, but not emphatically because I don't have any type of science or anything to back it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. I actually, I have a, a set of samples that 
takes a little bit of a deeper dive into the oxidation and what happens. So I'm gonna be kind of testing that theory soon. Nice. But yeah, neck pour versus uh, shoulder halfway. I, I personally, I think it's a thing just because I've experienced a lot. It doesn't happen as often as you would think so, but I feel like for the higher age, higher proof ones, a little air time does help and open it up. That's really how I stick with it. Sure, and you know, you, you read any review on the internet, it usually starts with rested in a Glencairn for 10 minutes. Yeah, for 10 minutes. You know. Yeah. Um, this is good though, by the way, man. This is good. I mean, I do definitely think that oxidation is a, a factor, um, but I think when people talk about neck pour, they're like, basically that very first pour is just discard it. You know, it's like when you're playing blackjack, they burn the first card. I don't know why, something wrong with it, I'm not sure. But I think that people kind of think of it like that, but then they'll go in for the next pour and immediately in like the same day or the next day. And I'm like, that's not really enough time, in my opinion, for any type of meaningful oxidation to occur in a sealed bottle. No scientist here, but in that sense, I think neck neck pour is kind of garbage. As Chad was saying, like there are so many other steps in especially these things that are like blended or whatever married together, they're in vats, they've been dumped, they've been whatever has happened in the long process of it getting in the bottle. I really don't think that that tiny amount of surface area like of the neck pour to the shoulder or whatever is going to make that big of a difference. Over time in a bottle where less, you know, there's less and less left in there and more air, of course yeah, I do think that that changes things, but I'm really not a big believer in the neck pour thing. Change my mind in the comments, change my mind. You know, we were talking about the the ridiculous things that whiskey drinkers do when you kind of zoom out and look at ourselves. And, and here's another one for me. Oh, uh, the old nose turn? The nose turn, which it makes sense because normally you're only breathing out of one nostril at a time. So you're, but you're giving you, yourself. But have you heard the thing that like, each side of your nostril leads to different parts of your brain. Yeah, it's like stereo, right? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you want to so, smell it in stereo, not mono. I don't do the I don't do the swing though. You don't do the roll. I don't do the roll. I go one, and then I just switch. I don't. Oh, I you, don't do you, the roll. You need it in high fidelity. See, yeah. you're you're technically stereo, but it's just left and right. This is Dolby right here. This is you doing surround sound. Surround sound. I don't know how I feel about this, Chad. Oh, just go with Sorry. it, man. Just okay. give into oh. it. Just oh. give into it. I'll try this. It's the roll method. It's a roll method. <laughs> I don't know. You know, get You're a little in your there. push broom there it sometimes. Kinda, yeah, I kinda <laughs> Yeah, I'm with them. I don't I don't love the the dramatics, the theatrics of the big roll when we're smelling and nosing. I think, you know, I don't make a big show of it, just nose it, nose it. As Jason said, like in the event that it's connecting into any different parts of your brain that it helps you with notes. I don't think that always helps, but sometimes it does. Or, you know, sometimes people got like one one nostril or whatever that's just not, not working. I, I feel like it happens to everybody sometimes. Well, not to break up the flow of the conversation, but we're gonna do exactly that because we wanna pause and tell you about our home on the internet. It's whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get the sweatshirt that I'm wearing. Oh, Sarah, the v uh, the V-neck that you're wearing as well. Normally we have uh, our, all of our glassware. We also have uh, bottle cut candles, hats, hoodies, t-shirts, uh, elemental elixir syrup, and more always coming soon at whiskeyambitions.com. And you can become a patron at patreon.com slash it's bourbon night and join our community for as little as one buck a month. And that is where we initially released our Sagamore barrel pick. Uh, usually barrel picks sell out in Patreon, but we had a quite the high yield on that one. So there are actually still some available. The link is in the description if you're interested in that bottle. But patrons joined us to do that barrel pick. Um, they get after the episode exclusives, discounts on that merch Chad was talking about, and more. Okay, we'll be right back. For a long time there, I resisted the Glen Karen because I, I hated what it, what it did. Hey Jason, how's your day? How's it going? It's good, right? <laughs> so yeah, so the other day, you know, it takes you out of the conversation, right? Um, so I was just convinced. I'm like, yeah, you, you ridiculous. Takes you out of the conversation. So I would use these tulip glass, but wasn't a Glencairn. You didn't have to tilt it back as much. Okay. But yeah, that work out for you. Well, fine, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Which means it didn't work at all. I mean, it's fine. I was yeah, years it was, ago, it was so. Years it did not work out. It did not work out for us. We don't use those glasses anymore. I was I was less of a competent whiskey uh, reviewer. Wow, look at those legs. That's great. Yeah, well, that's great. Yeah, it's a nice. It's a it's a good ride. Yeah. Um, but eventually, 
as I mentioned earlier, like you read in your review and it says rested in a Glen Karen for 10 minutes. Like yeah. the Glen Karen, if we were going to review things, I said we need to pick a glass, a, pick a vessel and stay in that lane because you want consistency. Like if I'm just drinking, I'll drink it out of whatever. I don't care. I'll drink it out of a red solo cup, but I, know, <laughs> I wouldn't choose that. But um, if I'm doing a review, it, there needs to be some type of control and this is as much control as we can give yeah, ourselves. Yeah, I think so too. Um, yeah. yeah, one one thing I used to do on my videos when you kind of step back, and maybe because I'm a solo reviewer, yeah. I don't have anyone to bounce things off of. I'll, uh, I, yeah. I'll sit here and I'll just be like, um, right before I took a sip, and I would always say, all right, let's go for another sip. I just like keep doing it. <laughs> and, like I would get comments like, why do you always announce when you're going to take another sip? Are we supposed to like hold on? Yes. Yeah, so like, Brace yourself. <laughs> I don't. See, I love that Chad's making fun of Jason here because he's always like, all right, I'm going to go in for my second tip. He also narrates his actions. So I think it's funny that he's giving Jason a hard time, but we'll let it go. Because I feel like if there's someone listening to me in the car, like they could kind of hear what I'm doing. Like say, I don't know, if like it's not always, yeah. because then I also kind of got myself out of the habit of saying, I like this one over this one. You know, it's like calling the bottles out. Totally. I've kind of taught myself to get in the habit of saying Same. the bottle name. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah and absolutely. then I think that's also why I go, let's go for another sip. <laughs> <laughs> so like they know what I'm doing. So <laughs> if you hear silence for the next few yeah. seconds, it's because I'm tasting and swallowing yeah. and then thinking. Yeah. I also used to, uh, you could kind of hear me chewing the bourbon in my early videos. I cut all that out. I yes. cut it all out. Yes. I cut no it one wants out. to hear. Yeah. Yeah. And then people like, Correct, no one wants to hear anyone chewing their bourbon. And there's, I actually have a whole thing with chewing your bourbon at all, or whatever you're doing. Like, I think swirling it, you know, swishing it around in your mouth, of course, like, that's just a normal part of drinking. But the, again, with the theatrics, the, like the chomping on it and just talk, and like talking with, you know, it in your mouth or twirling it around, um, no, gross. Nobody wants to hear that, just, like, I don't think that that's adding anything to the experience. I don't know if that's something on topic as far as like what's ridiculous in bourbon or just like a pet peeve of mine, but that's definitely one. And then people are like, how come we don't see you swallow it? I'm I like, got that comment I'm eventually. Like, do you want to hear me chew the bourbon? I, well, yeah. the, I you know, I, I'm not trying to dog this person, but they said, you know, hey, just curious, uh, legitimate question. Why do you um, edit out the part where you actually swallow it? Mm -hmm. Um, some I've noticed some whiskey tubers leave it in and others cut it out and I say one I try to make our videos as short as possible every time I go through the first edit then I go back and watch it and edit more and then if I have time I'm gonna cut <laughs> I'm gonna cut more yeah the other thing is people don't want to hear smack 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 yeah um, that's what it is it's just drink and then we're talking you know you don't need the ruminating of okay this <laughs> Whiskey. <laughs> I'm getting. Hold on. Yeah, good. And then you know, there's there's times where uh, it takes me a minute to kind of like break it down in my head before I, what I want to say. Especially right. as a as a solo shooter. Yeah. Which I had to do the other day because Sarah, you know, lost her taste yeah. due to COVID. Yeah. So I, uh, it's actually tomorrow's at this filming tomorrow's episode. And uh, afterwards, I was like, yeah, I, you know, all props to the solo shooters because yeah, uh, there's no one there to bounce ideas off of. Yeah, so you have to kind of just, you know, break it down in your head as much as you can. And, you know, I think but that's kind of the, the nice thing sometimes because you kind of can formulate your own opinion and you could kind of go back and forth with yourself and see what else kind of happens in the glass. Mm -hmm. And you don't always get so much of an outside opinion that could sway you. Uh, which can happen. I mean, somebody says, oh, I got this, I got this. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Completely. And that can completely kind of throw you off a little bit. So while there are some times I do, would you know, I would like somebody else's opinion to kind of help a little. Yeah. Um, but, there, but there's most of the time where it's just like, yeah, this is what I'm getting. And if, like, somebody watches you all the time and aligns with your palate, then I feel like you're giving them, you know, your honest opinion. So definitely. Um, I guess I'll finish up by saying one more thing that I think is kind of ridiculous that whiskey drinkers do. And I feel, I honestly feel bad for saying this. I like when we can talk and we're talking about things that we like and you say, oh, I love that bottle too. I have one at home. Cool. We're having a conversation. But if we're talking and all of a sudden you're like, oh, you like bourbon? Well, at home I have four Wellers and two Weller 107s. I got an Eagle Rare. I got two E.H. Taylors. I'm like, 
that's cool. I didn't ask for an inventory. Like, I don't know why people do that. Sometimes they just start listing their collection and I get it. I mean, I guess they're just excited and they're really proud of it. And that's fair. That's why I feel like I'm kind of being a little mean, but I don't know. I'm just, whenever people start doing that, I'm like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> you know, I don't need, I don't need your full list. I'll believe you. You like bourbon. That's cool. Well, there you go. Again, special thanks to Jason from The Mash and Drum. If you haven't subscribed to him already, you can do so at The Mash and Drum here on YouTube. You can also follow him on Instagram at Mash and Drum. It's probably down here. It's probably down there. Uh, and you can listen to his new podcast. Just search The Mash and Drum wherever you like to listen to your podcasts. And if you're not subscribed to us already, well, you can also do that as well. It costs you nothing. You can do so by clicking right up here. There are suggestions of other videos down here. We hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Thanks, Jason. Until next time, drink more bourbon.